Today on the Topic Show, Captain Kennedy is roasted by South Park for destroying Disney. Vivek on NATO over expansion against Russia goes viral. Matt Gates goes viral for noting new speaker Mike Johnson doesn't have any shady business deals. Disney purchased the remaining stake in Hulu from Comcast. Toyota stock jumps 6% after their Q3 earnings are re released, while Paycom stock crashes nearly 40%, and ELF stock jumps 9%. Also, Toyota is recalling about 1.8 million RAV4 SUVs. All of that and much more on The Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of the Topping Show is sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Gotta say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of November, so if you could click that button, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Toyota stock jumping 6% after their Q3 earnings are released, but their projected EV sales fall about 40%. Now, this is thanks to one of the best websites, well, what used to be good old Yahoo, which perhaps is one of the biggest business blunders in history, where they refused to sell to Microsoft in their heyday for about 40 something billion dollars, and they're later sold for less than a tenth of that value to, I believe, Verizon. And subsequently, they've been bought and sold more times than I could possibly fathom or even care to remember. But nevertheless, there still is a little bit of Yahoo left. Now, this specifically is thanks to a senior reporter by the name of Praz. And he noted that Toyota is increasing their outlook for 2024. Their new outlook for their sales revenue is projected to be $284.7 billion, which is up 5 tr trillion yen for a year ago from its prior forecast. And I believe that correlates to now about 30 billion American dollars. Now, to end, Toyota will also now buy back as much as $660 million worth of shares, or 44% of its float, and boost its dividend yield by 20 cents per share. Now, Toyota did not, however, boost its global vehicle deliveries forecast, it remains at 11.38 million vehicles. While the company sees a decrease in sales due to the uncertainty in markets such as China, and an automotive maker sees improvements in areas like North America and other regions where, quote, robust market is expected, as well as in Europe where the company expects a recovery in supply. Which, yeah, one of the biggest issues in the automotive community, or the biggest threats rather, is BYD. They're one of the largest automotive manufacturers no one's ever heard of. They're a huge company based in China making EV vehicles for that market. And depending on how the export laws work in other countries, it may be able to flood the other countries with their product at a very, very steep discount price. So it'll be interesting to see how that factor plays into account into those other markets. Now, they say that Toyota also sees its global forecast for battery electric vehicles, or BEVs, sales falling nearly 40% to 123,000 vehicles from their prior forecast of 202,000 vehicles. However, their hybrid sales are continuing to climb and make up for that difference. Toyota did not say whether it sees BEV sales falling, but it appears to be in line with what Ford and GM have been forecasting with EV demand slipping in the U.S. due to higher prices. Now, they say due to higher prices, but you can still buy, well, you used to be able to, you used to, be able to buy a Nissan Leaf for like 20 bucks and a pack of beer. I'm only moderately kidding. The Nissan Leaf was the, one of the first mass-produced electric vehicles that had a very, very aggressive price point. It also had comical build quality and, you know, range but nevertheless you could purchase it now i don't know how much of this is really a price issue at this point because if we go back to what does the chevy bolt go for the chevy bolt is one of the largest mass-produced lower price point electric vehicles that you can purchase and if you go to just the chevy website which uh, I don't know how boring you can make a website in terms of they used to have such great vehicles like the Camaro with a you know stick shift and a V8 which next year is going to be a two-door EV SUV and the Corvette's going to be an EV. Sad times at Chevrolet. Nevertheless, if you go to the Chevy Bolt in terms of the price point, let's say you want to, let's lie to the internet website and say we want to actually pretend to build and buy this product. Now this, in full disclosure, this is an experiment. This may not work. It may crash the website subsequently because I don't think anyone has ever conscientiously clicked on the website to build and price a Chevy Bolt. I kind of think people just buy it by accident, perhaps. 
Now, this tells us that's, a aggress that's an aggressive price point. Now, the range isn't as good as like a Tesla, granted it's a multiple of the price point, but it looks like the base model Chevy Bolt, this is the 2023 model year, 1LT, that starts at $27,495. Now, granted, the government's still gonna take about 10% of your paycheck, or 10% more when you have to register the vehicle, depending on where you live, and your local dealership may mark it up 10, 20, 30 grand. I don't know what they're doing these days in regard to Chevy Bolt demand, but nevertheless, that's a pretty aggressive price point. So I'm not sure if this analysis by the Yahoo gentleman when it comes to Toyota decreasing their forecast for EVs, I don't think it's, I don't think he's correct in regards to the price point being the big issue. I think more Americans are just concerned about buying disposable vehicles. Because again, technology changes very rapidly. So I just have to have a little asterisk or disclaimer when I say this. Today, with EV technologies, they're basically disposable smartphones on wheels. They were great and they're reliable for a certain amount of time. Granted, you only have one person who can repair it, so your local repair shop can't really help with a Tesla. And after the battery dies, the vehicle is basically garbage because batteries range from 15 to 20 to 30 grand now these days for an EV vehicle. Now, that's the main part of the vehicle as opposed to an internal combustion engine. If the engine breaks on that, depending on what, as long as it's not an exotic, you know, car, you can go to the dump yard or the just scrap yard, you can get a new, a new used or new to you used engine for an internal combustion engine for a couple hundred bucks, maybe 1200 bucks, 1300. Again, it depends on the make and model, of course, but the percentage of the value to the vehicle is much, much smaller compared to the cost of a battery. And of course, the battery, uh, you're probably not gonna be able to buy that used. You're gonna buy that directly new from Tesla or what have you. So I don't think the adoption, the adoption rate of EVs in the US, I don't think that rate is decreasing because of price specifically. I think it's because of the aforementioned reasons I've uncovered. Also, if you have a modicum of excitement in your life and you want a little bit more, just buy something with three pedals. You can't get that with an EV. EVs are manual transmissions. So I always purport, if you want to actually have fun and enjoy the experience of driving, buy an internal combustion engine with a stick shift, aka a manual transmission, you'll never go back. It is the most exhilarating thing ever. And it's a good workout. You got to slam that clutch with your, your little foot. Yeah, you got to really work for it, so to say. But nevertheless, back to the coverage with Toyota. Now, they said that Toyota's most recent fiscal quarter, which went from July to September, the company reported the sales revenue hit. Again, this is 11.43 trillion yen, which sounds really cool, but I know we'll go back to the US dollars. That correlates to $76 billion. Now that is up 24% compared to the same time period a year ago. On their not operating income, that was 9.5 billion, nearly tripling its level from the last year. Toyota's margin improved significantly to 11.2% profit margin compared to 4.7% a year ago. Now they say, once again, this is the effects of cost cutting, improving material pricing and better pricing from the product mix. Again, I'm not saying Yahoo's imperfect, but well, they are imperfect. I take that back, they are imperfect. Now, they also mentioned, forgot to say the big elephant in the room or panda in the room, because they issue all geopolitical joke. The issue with inner, you know, a huge global economy right now is the semiconductors now other countries make them. The overwhelming majority are made in Taiwan. Now the U.S. is starting to make factories here again, which is also one of those things where you can thank your politicians for forcing the companies to outsource and now they're coming back. But nevertheless, it's one of those issues where, you know, a couple years ago, that was a huge bottleneck in the whole automotive community because, again, cars are becoming more and more like computers, unfortunately. So if you can't get the semiconductors, that's why they weren't able to produce as many vehicles. So this year, that is not so much of a constraint. So I think that is also another contributing factor of why Toyota has been improving their outlook as well as getting better performance these days. Now, it'll be interesting to see, again, I think more and more of these companies are starting to realize the EV adoption rate is decreasing and they're starting to hedge their bets as I kind of said they would, especially with Toyota where they're known for making bulletproof cars or damn near bulletproof vehicles that last darn near a quarter of a century and a million miles. My family still drives a Honda Accord manufactured in 2001. Honda and Toyota make darn near bulletproof vehicles. They also offer a stick shift for many of those models. You know, manual transmission as all of them should. Not to brag, but I did pass a Supra on the track recently. Granted, it was raining and I had a front wheel drive car, so it was a big, big advantage. But nevertheless, it did happen. Now, let me know in the comments, are you still interested in buying an EV? Have you already purchased one? Or are you kind of happy that some of these older options, AKA the legacy options are still around. And for your next vehicle refresh, you will probably buy an internal combustion engine. 
be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking time to tune in to the show again today. I cannot appreciate it enough. If you click that subscribe button, that'll help the channel grow and develop and be able to make the show better and better. Also, the comments are a great way to help me get the show in terms of increasing with new ideas and new qualities. I had to almost do an eye roll I was trying to remember that certain word. But nevertheless, the feedback is always greatly appreciated. I do apologize, and sometimes it might take a couple days for me to get back to the comments, depending on the workloads that I'm working with. But I always do appreciate the critique, even if it's negative, because I think that is how you grow the most. Also, and lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.